Hey, Susan. How many days has it been since you started ignoring me? Come to think of it, you've been ignoring me since after Mom's funeral. How long are you going to keep that attitude up? Anyway, the bereavement leave I applied for with the company is over today. I'll be back to work as usual tomorrow. Good night. Hey, bro. It's been a week. Good morning, Tyler. Why did you call me bro? I don't like that. Just call me by my name. Okay, okay. What a pain in the ass. Hey, Kevin. You... Didn't get fired? Huh? What are you talking about? I was on bereavement leave for the past week, so there's nothing wrong with that. Oh, really? Come to think of it, you don't have a father and you're the only child, right? So? I don't mean to be indelicate, but... I heard your mom made a lot of money, so I thought you might have inherited a lot. That's not for you to ask, and I'm not going to tell you. What? Don't be petty. Hey, if you say another word, I'll kick your ass. Oh, scary. Let's get to work. See you later. Susan, I'm texting from work. Hi, my darling Tyler. I just talked to your husband. He's in a really bad mood. <laughs> well, that can't be helped, can it? His mother, who was his only living relative, passed away. And after her funeral, his wife is suddenly ignoring him. And I'm sure he has no idea why. Oh, that's harsh. What? You told me to do it, didn't you? You said while Kevin is mentally weak, we should slowly push him into a corner and make him lose his ability to make normal decisions. And by the time the mourning period is over in a year, Kevin will say he wants a divorce. Ha <laughs> ha that's right. By the way, what are you doing today? I've got some urgent documents to prepare, so I'll finish them in the morning. And then, I'll be out and about first thing in the afternoon. So, how about around 2 to 3.30 p.m.? Okay, handsome. Well, good luck with your work, honey. Thanks. I'll see you later, babe. At the memorial service, I thought we could talk for the first time in a while, even just a little. But you're wearing a face mask and pretending that you have a cold that's making you lose your voice. I'm sure there's a reason you don't want to talk to me that badly. But if you don't talk to me, I won't know what's going on. Nothing gets resolved. If you think that I should realize what's going on without you telling me, I'm really not good at guessing that kind of thing. If you still want to continue ignoring me, go ahead. I'll just move on on my own. Hey Kevin, you've been... No, that shouldn't be happening. What? You've been bringing your own lunch for the past month or so, haven't you? Until now, you always ate at the company cafeteria, ate out, or bought food at convenience stores. Oh, yeah. Since my mother passed away, I realized I was starving for homemade taste. Homemade taste. After much thought, I decided to bring my own lunch. It's also a way to save money on food. Well, you're pretty good at making your lunch. Yeah. If someone who cooks regularly makes lunch, this is as good as it can be. Oh, someone who cooks regularly. Hey, Susan. 
What is it, darling? How are things with Kevin? How is he at home? Huh? How is Kevin? Hmm, I wonder. I told you this before, but after the memorial service, he seems to have become defiant. He sends me texts once in a while, but he just talks about some errands and that's it. I'm still ignoring him completely. In short, it's like in-house separation, so we don't know how each other's lives are going on. He's been bringing his own lunchbox to work for the past month or so. Oh, really? He used to eat at the company cafeteria, eat out, or buy food at convenience stores. Oh, really? You don't know anything about that? No, I don't know. I see. What's wrong? No, it's... it's nothing. Anyway, Tyler, do you have a chance to come out of your office today? Uh, yeah, I do, but I'll be with my co-worker. Oh, really? I've been notified that due to a major personal change coming up in a little while, I'll be reassigned to a different area for sales. Personnel change? I don't know who it is yet, but there's a guy who's going to be transferred overseas. Because of that, the whole sales department has been restless for the last week or so. I have to be back at the office in about two hours today, and my schedule is pretty full. I see. Well then, it can't be helped, huh? I'll text you when I'm free. Sorry about that. Okay, see you later, handsome. Hey, Tyler! I haven't seen you at all recently. What's going on? Hi, Susan. Since you were talking about the reassignment of your area, we've been seeing each other less and less. I haven't seen you this month. Uh, I... I... Tyler? Because of the reassignment, I have very few clients. Huh? Now, I'm mostly working in-house, four days a week, doing mainly clerical work. Even if I can go out, someone is accompanying me or I have to come back in a short time. What's more, our new company policy requires me to carry a mobile device with GPS app installed whenever I go out of the office. So now, it's impossible to make time-consuming detours. Oh no! How about we meet on my days off? Kevin will be at home. Even though I'm ignoring him all the time, he's still at home. So if he were to follow me, we can't do anything that would reveal our relationship. That's true. Even if we get a big sum of money as a divorce settlement, we don't want it to be taken away by compensation. I know. Oh, I miss you. Me too. Susan, good news. Tyler, what is it? I'm going on a business trip to New York by myself from Wednesday to Friday of the week after next. What? That means... Let's go together, babe. I'll miss you while I'm working over there, but I'm free to do whatever I want at night. Let's make love till morning after a long time in New York. Yay! Oh, that's right. During this business trip, my favorite detective drama will be aired. I'd be happy if you could give me TV priority for the time this drama is on. Oh, that's such a trivial thing. Sure, let's watch it together. Thanks. Oh, I was cheated. Seriously? What are you going to do? All the ignoring I've done up to now is in vain. That's my line, you know. I'm surprised too. How could I know? 
How could I know that the money a spouse gets from an inheritance is not subject to property division in a divorce? And the person who leaves gets not a penny. I never thought I would find out about this in a detective drama I was looking forward to watching. Then, I'm better off not getting divorced. If this is the case, I shouldn't have ignored Kevin so much. I shouldn't have done something to make him distrust me. It's your fault, you know. What the hell? You say you were ignoring Kevin all the time, but weren't you making lunch for him so that he won't hate you? What? What are you talking about? Are you talking about what you said before about Kevin bringing his lunchbox to the office? Actually, I've had my suspicions ever since then. You're not seriously planning on getting a divorce, are you? Huh? If I didn't want to get a divorce, I wouldn't have ignored him all the time. Then what's with that lunchbox? Kevin just made it himself. Huh? He's a man and he cooks? Huh? Don't tell me, Tyler. Are you the type to say that housework is for women? Huh? That's the common sense of the world. What? You seriously have such an outdated way of thinking. Huh? Enough already. Let's break up. What? Because we found out that divorce won't bring in a lot of money. If that's the case, I'm a full-time housewife, so I don't want to get divorced. I should break up with you before Kevin finds out about our relationship, so I don't have to pay compensation, right? Well, that's true. I'm feeling super down. I think we're done. Well then, don't forget to delete my contact information and text messages. I know, I know. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hey, bro. What's with that again? What do you think you're doing, demanding compensation from me? There's only one reason. What? Don't tell me you don't have any idea or that you have amnesia or something like that. I've spent about six months gathering evidence. What? Tyler, you were having an affair with my wife Susan. By the time I started my investigation, you'd been seeing each other less and less. And apparently, you guys had a fight and broke up recently. The relationship itself has been going on ever since you met Susan at our company-sponsored barbecue two years ago. I've found out that you've been seeing each other quite frequently. I can't believe you found out that much. Now, I think you know why I'm charging you compensation. I'd like you to communicate with my lawyer regarding compensation and other matters related to your infidelity. Damn, I broke up with her before you found out, but you had already found out. On that note, I also found out that you and Susan had been going to a hotel many times while you pretended to be on sales on site visits, and that you took Susan on a business trip to New York last month. I reported it to your company. What? I'm sure you'll get a call from upper management sooner or later. I recommend that you just go along with the punishment they decide. No way. Hey, Kevin. Can't we make up soon? We haven't talked in about a year. You know, I had a good reason for ignoring you. You lost your mother. And I wasn't sure how to deal with you. I didn't know what to do. I lost the timing and time flew. Oh, 
I got a text from someone unusual. Oh, Kevin! It's been a year since you started ignoring me. I thought you might have noticed the divorce papers on the living room table and contacted me. What? Why divorce papers? You don't get it. What do you mean? By the looks of it, you're not in touch with Tyler anymore. What? Well, I did confirm that you broke up after you returned from New York. You found out? Yeah, long time ago. How did you? I was very careful not to get caught. It was about six months ago. I got sick and had to leave work early, and I saw you guys walking arm in arm. What? From there, I hired a detective and did some research on my own, and here we are. That's... So, I'll talk to you about divorce and compensation through my lawyer. My lawyer's business card is there with the divorce papers. Wait! Let's talk face to face. We've only seen each other a few times in a year. And we haven't talked once. Actually, I'm in Australia right now. Australia? I just arrived yesterday. Why Australia? I got an overseas assignment and I'll probably be living here for the next 20 years. What? Could it be the big personal change that Tyler was talking about? Oh, if you're referring to the hecticness in sales department with all the reassignments and such, you're talking about me. I really wanted to work it out to the point where I could file for divorce before coming to Australia. But I was able to convince the company to wait until after the first anniversary of my mother's passing before I arrived in Australia. Oh, by the way, the first anniversary of your mother's death? We had a memorial service about 10 days ago. I didn't hear anything about that. Oh, I purposely didn't tell you. Why? Because I knew you were after the inheritance I inherited from mom. So I didn't want you to be at the memorial service on her first anniversary. You knew that too? That's all I have to tell you. You'll have to go through my lawyer from now on. Oh, wait! Goodbye forever. What? Oh, no! Oh, no, come back! I've been a full-time housewife all my life, and you're demanding compensation from me and a divorce? I don't want that. Kevin! I left the rest to my lawyer and managed to get a divorce. As for the compensation, Susan and Tyler asked to pay in installments. But I could see that they would evade payment sooner or later, so I requested a lump sum payment. I don't know how they managed to come up with the money but the compensation was transferred to me shortly after. Also, as for the present situation of each of these two, Tyler has been laid off from his company and his parents have cut ties with him as well. He is now living off his part-time job while paying back his debts. Susan, on the other hand, she has been seen walking around downtown at night dressed in flashy clothes with a different man every night. Rumors persist that she is in some kind of a shady business, so nobody is in contact with her, not even her own family members. Belle, where is my dinner? I just got home. Don't tell me you didn't prepare any. Don't ignore me. Answer the phone. 
I'm sorry, Glenda. I'm almost done with work. You're talking about dinner? Yes, it's past 7 p.m. Why isn't the dinner ready yet? Huh? You told me last night that you don't want dinner for tonight. Huh? You said you're going to the movies with your friend and you're going to dinner after, so I thought I was the only one that's gonna have dinner at home. Did I really say such a thing? Yes, you did. There's a nice Italian restaurant by the movies and you said you're gonna have some wine there. That's why I thought I didn't have to come home early today. I thought the leftovers in the fridge will be enough for tonight since it's just me. Oh, that's right. Then make me some now. What? My friend had to run errands, so she left after the movie. We didn't end up going to the restaurant, so I need you to come home right now and make me dinner. No, wait a minute. I can't do it right now. Oh, you're saying you don't want to do your duties? It's not that. You told me you didn't need anything. But my plans have changed. I'm sure you don't have that much to do at work. Just get it over with and come home. Don't. Please, don't be unreasonable. I'm starving. Then why don't you prepare it yourself? It would be faster. What the hell? You're my son's wife. Why are you treating me like this? Please, don't overreact. It's your own meal. Besides, if I go grocery shopping and cook, it'll take more time. I think it's better if you cook on your own. Seriously, you're so mean. I'm mean? As soon as my son left for his business trip, this is what you're gonna do to me? Stop bullying me. I'm not bullying you. He went abroad for his business trip, right? It's gonna be gone for a while. I'm sure you're planning on doing whatever you want while he's gone. You're the one who's doing whatever you want to do. Whatever. It's your job to take care of me and cook dinner for me. If you don't do anything, I'll tell my son about it. Yes, okay. I'll leave work as soon as I can. I'll make something out of what's in the fridge. Stop saying unnecessary things. It's like you don't want to do it. I'm sorry. Ugh. What is it with these wives lately not knowing anything about respecting their mother-in-law? I guess I'll have to teach you how to. Hey, Belle. Where are you? Belle! Why are you ignoring me? Glenda, sorry. I was on the train and I had my phone on silent mode. I wasn't ignoring you. You need to come home now. What? Is everything okay? I'm on my way to work. Are you sick? No, I'm not. Breakfast. I made some for you. It's on the table. Are you going to make me eat that thing? Huh? That thing? Bacon and eggs? That's just lazy. You just fry these. I'm sorry about that. I don't have that much time in the morning. All I can make is simple meals. Do you still consider yourself a housewife? If you care about your family's health, you would make something more healthy. But Glenda, I know I don't have anything that healthy for breakfast. But I do serve you healthy meals for dinner, right? Even last night. I made three side dishes using whatever was in the fridge, didn't I? You're telling me that was healthy? It was disgusting. <laughs> Excuse me? I was so hungry, so I had no choice but to eat it. I'd usually spit out something like that the moment it touched my lips. <laughs> That's terrible. The moment my son leaves, you try to make me eat such awful food. You really are a mean wife to the core. Um... Therefore, including yesterday's reflection, I want you to make me breakfast again. I don't want just anything. I can't do that now. Huh? I'm on the train heading to work already. If you don't like what I made for breakfast, please make it yourself. Hey, are you trying to pick a fight with me again? Picking a fight is not the issue here. Everything you're saying is just unreasonable. 
such an insolent wife. Seems like you still need some training after all. Training? I'm really regretting it. Back when you and my son got married, I should have given you proper wife training. What training are you talking about? Both household chores and the mindset of being a wife. When my husband was still alive, I couldn't be strict with you, because my husband was quite fond of you. Now that he's gone, and with Sean being out of the country, this is the perfect opportunity to toughen you up. Oh no, I can manage household chores just fine on my own. I don't think there's anything I need to be taught at this point. That's the thing. I don't like how you always argue with everything I say. Huh? Just come back right now and make a proper breakfast. And then, it seems like the bathroom hasn't been cleaned, so scrub it until it shines. Wait a minute. I told you I can't because I have work. Always using work as an excuse. You're the wife of this household, right? Which is more important, your work or your duties as a wife? You can't compare those things. Anyway, before Sean comes back. I've decided to give you some wife training. Oh, excuse me, Glenda. I have to get off the train now. What? You're really going to go to work? Yes. Hey, what about my breakfast? You'll have to take care of it yourself. Bye. Glenda? I just received a list of things. Oh yeah, that's your to-do list. A to-do list? You don't expect me to do everything on this list, do you? Yes, I do. Do everything on the list when you get home from work today. That's what you get for not making me breakfast. Laundry, clean the bathroom, scrub the toilet, iron clothes, and even weed the garden? I can't do all of this tonight. I can barely even make dinner. Why do you keep making excuses? I can manage to do the laundry, but do I really have to weed the garden tonight? Are you trying to talk back to me? You're such a brat. Glenda, you're home all day, right? So what? I have to work. Isn't it a little too much for you to ask me to do all these chores? Then why don't you quit your job? Huh? You're the wife. If work keeps getting in your way to do wife duties, you better quit your job. It's not that easy. Besides, we agreed to split the house chores if you're going to live with us. Are you making excuses again? This is why I need to train you. You always got something to say whenever I ask you to do something. Is this really how you're going to train me? Yes. <laughs> Why do I feel like you're just using me like a servant? Wow, that's rude. I'm doing this for your own good. It's all for you. How is it good for me? You're just bullying me. Glenda, please, tell me what do you really want from me? You're taking advantage of Sean's absence, forcing me to do all kinds of unreasonable things. Well, this isn't the first time you bullied me. But the past few days have gone too far. Let me be honest with you then. I hate you. Before you got married to my son, he cared for me, even my husband. However, as soon as you came to the picture, they forgot about me. They started treating me like I'm nobody. I think you're overthinking. Both your son and husband, I believe, were equally kind to you as they were to me. I don't want to be treated the same as you. What? Nothing matters if I'm not the number one priority. Wow, you're childish. Whatever. I can bully you as much as I can while my son is away. Given all the frustration I've endured until now, it's time for some serious payback. <laughs> I knew you've always wanted to bully me. Because you're always so cocky. Anyway, don't forget to do all the things on the list when you get home from work. I'll kick you out if you don't.
Hey, can you talk? What's up? I think I've had enough. What? What happened? Are you okay? The moment you left for your business trip, your mother started acting out. Is she bullying you? Yes. She'll say it's wife training. She'll criticize the dishes I've prepared. But it doesn't stop there. She'll demand I remake breakfast and knowing that I'm on my way to work. And when I return from work, she piles on a mountain of household chores for me to do. That's not training, it's just plain harassment. And besides, you two agreed on splitting the house chores, right? I said the same thing. But she was all fired up about it. I ended up doing everything she told me to do. From preparing dinner to cleaning laundry and even weeding the garden. I'm sorry, Belle. Mom has always been selfish. And if people don't do as she says, she quickly gets upset. I'm sorry for complaining. I know you're busy too. No, Mom turned out like that is partly because Dad and I spoiled her. I feel sorry for her causing you trouble. I'll have a serious talk with her when I get back. Okay. Also, I might be able to get back home sooner than expected. Really? Yeah, so just hang in there a little longer. Okay. Be safe. Belle, no matter how many times I say it, you just don't seem to get it, do you? What's wrong, Glenda? Making a crappy breakfast again? You're such a failure. Oh, wait a minute. I made you a proper meal, didn't I? I made some vegetable simmered dish, grilled fish, boiled greens, even soup. Just because you took time to make it, it doesn't mean it's good enough. Too much seasoning. Eating something like this will make you sick. I see. You got upset the other day saying it was too bland. So I tried to season it more. It's so awful, it's inedible. It's worse than animal feed. You don't have to be that harsh. So you want me to make it again? No, I don't. You don't have to. I'll throw this garbage away. What? I'll throw it all out in the garden and let the crows eat it. Oh no, please. Don't throw it away. I woke up so early to make those. Oh no. What's the matter? My hands just slipped. All your dishes ended up on the ground in the garden. <laughs> No way. Did you really throw them away? That's too much. Well, my hands slipped. What do you want me to do about it? <laughs> I took care of the trash for you, so you should be thanking me for that. <laughs> Glenda. Are you crying? This is just too much. I won't go easy, even if you cry. This is all part of your wife training, you know? <laughs> if you're frustrated, then make better meals next time. Mom, what are you doing to my wife? What? Belle just called me crying. Why are you calling me? Aren't you out on a business trip? I was, but I finished earlier than planned. Oh, yeah. So, what did you do to Belle? I didn't do anything. Really? There's food all over the yard. What's all this? What? Wait a minute. Where are you? In front of the house. No way. Mom, tell me the truth. What did you do to my wife? What do you mean? She told me everything. Belle made breakfast. He didn't like how it tasted. So you threw it out in the yard. Well, that's... Yeah, yeah, it's part of the training. See, lately she's been all about work and haven't been able to do much housework, right? So while you weren't here, I thought I'd make her a wife you could be proud of. That's none of your business. Even when Belle is busy, she never complains and still manages to do the housework. Honestly, she's much quicker and more thorough than you, Mom. How dare you talk to your mother like that? That's rude! What's with the wife training? Don't be silly. Mom, you're in the house, right? Don't hide. Come out. I don't want to. You're mad at me. Of course I am. You've always bullied 
Belle all these years. I'm not bullying her. I just wanted her to be a useful wife. I told you, she's much better at doing house chores than you do. But she has a bad attitude. She never listens and she talks back. It's you who has an attitude problem. I know all about it. It seems like you've been giving my wife a hard time since the day I left for my business trip. You've been sneaking around and bullying her. That wasn't my intention. Huh? How can you say that while treating my wife like a servant? Wait, hold on a second. I didn't mean to treat her like a servant. I was just feeling lonely. When your father passed away, and you, my only son, got married, there was no one left to care for me. That's why we moved in with you. You said you didn't want to be alone, so I convinced Belle to agree to it. She even said your mom is like a mother to me. She was okay having you around. Mom, you disregarded our feelings. I didn't mean to. I didn't want her to take you away from me. I'm married now. I'm already married. I'm not just your son anymore. What are you talking about? You're my precious only son. I'm sick of this. We've decided to move out of this house. Leave? Why? Please take some time alone to cool down and think things over. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Sean says you two are leaving home. You have to talk him out of it. I need you to convince him. Oh, Sean's back. Yes, he is. He came back earlier than expected, and he saw me throw away the food. Oh, I see. Well, anyone would be disgusted seeing their mother act like that, wouldn't they? I don't want to be separated from my son. Please, Belle, do something. I'll leave the house with him tomorrow. Huh? What are you talking about? You're my daughter-in-law, right? Fulfill your duties as a daughter-in-law. Talk to my son. Daughter-in-law? Not anymore. I'm cutting ties with you. What? Of course, Sean wants to cut ties with you too. That's terrible. You brainwashed my son. You filled his head with negative things about me. You turned him against me, didn't you? I only told him the truth. You liar. You scumbag wife. Go ahead, say what you like. You treated me like a servant. I will never forget about all the things you did. I'm sorry, I was wrong. I apologize. So please don't cut me off. Glenda, it's too late. I've endured your bullying since I got married to Sean, but enough is enough. It seems like Sean has finally realized it too. No, don't say that. I'll reflect on my actions. I'll change my ways starting now, so please forgive me. No way. Hey, if you're leaving tomorrow, that means you'll come home tonight, right? Then let's talk things over again. No, I'm not coming home today. What? Sean is furious, and he doesn't want to see you. We'll get a room tonight. Oh no! We'll pick up our stuff tomorrow. Please don't do anything with it. Wait! Don't leave me alone. Goodbye. Bell. The next day, me and Sean went to pick up our stuff. Linda got down on her knees, crying and begging us, but we ignored her and left. According to our neighbors, since we left, Glenda seems to have completely changed her attitude. She used to love chatting and would often have neighborhood gatherings, but now she doesn't even greet her friends when she sees them. Loneliness can really change a person. We were staying with my parents for a while, but recently we found a new home and started our life together. It's our first time living just the two of us since we got married. Maybe because of that, we still live together like newlyweds.